Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Today, guys, we did a bunch of Founders beers not long ago. And I said I wasn't, I posted on the site that I wasn't going to do anymore. And I had a lot of comments uh, that I sh shouldn't be like that. And this, hate on him, bruise hate, and all that stuff. But with what's going on with Founders recently, with the lawsuit, with discrimination, and them selling out, guys, the Brewers Association says you can't be a craft brewer if more than 25% of the brewery is owned by a macro brewery or macro it's ABN Bev, Middle Coors, Heineken, San Miguel, uh, all the, the big macro breweries. So Founders does not fall into that category anymore. They're not considered a craft brewery anymore. I am not going to buy their beers anymore. But I'm going to treat this. If somebody sends me one, I'm, I feel obligated to review it. Rico has sent me two of the Founders beers. This is a 2017, and he just recently sent me a 2019. I am going to review both of those guys. Uh, some of the people might be offended by that. I am so sorry. And some of the people are not. That I've had comments on both sides of the fence there. Uh, you shouldn't do this, or uh, it's still a tasty beer. Uh, I'm still going to buy it, no matter what you say. And I, you know, that is absolutely your choice. But I am not going to purchase any more of their beers myself. I support the independent craft breweries, uh, but I still review Bourbon County beers from uh, Goose Island. Uh, I don't buy them anymore because AB and Bev owns them. Uh, but I still review them when they're sent to me. So I'm going to, to treat the Founders beers that way, guys. Uh, uh, it, it may offend some people, and it may not on other people. They still say, oh, I'm still going to buy them. They still make tasty beers. Or you're on the other side of the fence. No, they're discriminating and all that stuff. Guys, I, 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 I'm going to get out of that political arena there. Uh, the Brewers Association, like I said, if 25% or, or more than 25% is owned by Macro, uh, identity, uh, AB Bev, Heineken, San Miguel, Coors Miller, uh, they, they're not considered craft beer anymore. And this beer company, Founders, is not considered a craft beer anymore because of what they've done recently. So, but Rico has sent me two of the CBSs, which I thought were outstanding, world-class beers. Couldn't You had to stand in line for a week to get your hands on one of them around here. Not so much in other places of the country. But uh, this is a 2017 edition in a big 22-ounce bomber. He recently sent me a 2019 edition, which is in the little 12-ounce bomber. So they realized, like a lot of breweries have, we can put it in a smaller package and charge the same price for it. And that's what they're doing, more than likely. So... We're going, to review, we're going to review it, guys. I'm not going to purchase their beers myself anymore, but if they're sent to me, I am going to review them. And if I chap your ass, don't watch it. So, with that being said, this is a 2017 Beer Advocate. Clumps them all together. They don't differentiate between years or ABVs or whatever. And they are saying on this one it's 11.3, which is incorrect on this particular one. 2017 is 11.7%. So, uh, let's jump over to Untap. They have the 2017 edition listed, and it is 11.7%, which what it says on the label on this one, uh, and 45 IBUs. Uh, the commercial description here says, Canadian breakfast salad with imperial salad brewed with blend of coffees and imported chocolates, then aged in spent, spent, 
bourbon barrels that have mostly been aged pure Michigan maple syrup. So, uh, don't know, you can gather that information for what you want it to be. Uh, it says spirit barrels and have most recently been aged pure Michigan maple syrup. So, sounds to me, from what they're telling me, that it was spirit barrels, then they put maple syrup in them, and then they put this beer in them. So it's not something they put the beer in from what I am reading that's not had anything else in it before. Like first run bourbon barrels or rum or whatever type of barrel, they put maple syrup in it. So that's the way I'm gathering the information. So uh, that may be correct or incorrect, I'm not sure. So. But it does have 2017 release on here, and it does say uh, uh, Imperial Stout brewed with chocolate and coffee aged in maple syrup slash bourbon barrels, 11.7%. And like I said, big 22-ounce bomber, I don't think they're doing that. Uh, the one Rico sent me the other day is a little 12-ounce bottle. So whether they're doing both sizes or just a little 12-ounce bottles now, uh, I would probably they say they're just doing the little 12 ounce bottle because they can charge the same amount for that little 12 ounce bottle that they charged for the, tw the 22 ounce bottle a long time ago. So, it is what it is guys. Uh, whether, whatever side of the fence that you're on, uh, I just want to make that clear that if somebody sends me something that's now owned by a macro, I, I am going to review it like I do the Bourbon County series from Goose Island. Uh, but I'm not going to spend my money on them anymore. So Rico, once again, I thank you for sending me the beers that you do, sir. But, uh, and I'm going to grade it accordingly, guys. If it's a 10 beer, I'm going to tell you it's a 10 beer. This is a 2017 just before all this shit hit the fan with them selling out and discrimination lawsuits and all that stuff. Uh, so, uh, they, I was a big fan of their beers, guys, especially the CBS and the KBS and some of the other beers that they did. Uh, yeah, but, Money talks and bullshit walks. So that's what they say. So with that being said, we've gone over everything we're going to go over. It is time. It's time. So let's get this open. Uh, I had decided at one time that I wasn't going to do them anymore, but eh, I'm not going to buy them anymore. Basically, it's what I'm saying now. If somebody sends it to me, I'm going to do it. So if they chapped your ass, turn it off. Don't watch We're going to go right down the center on this one. Look at that. Very nice head. Very nicely carbonated for an almost 12 percenter. A good two fingers of head on that pour. A very nice looking beer. Over to the light. Very nice. Very good looking beer. Very dark beer. Nice khaki colored head. Look at that. Very awesome looking beer, guys. I mean, absolutely. It's a, it's a crying shame uh, that all the controversy is going over uh, on this brewery, but it is what it is, guys. They're not considered a crap brewery anymore since they sold out. So, I don't support them. I don't support them anymore. But if somebody sends me something, I'm going to review it. So, hopefully it won't trap your ass. To the nose we go. Very nice sweetness. Maple syrup is there. Rich roasted malt is there. Not getting a huge bourbon note, and this is bourbon barrel age. Uh, maybe a little bit of coffee in on the, on the nose. If you're looking for something with big bourbon notes, this is not it. Not on the aroma, anyway. It smells very nice. Maybe some. Uh, Caramel toffee, black molasses, bittersweet chocolate. Not getting any dark fruit notes right now. But it's cold right out of the fridge. Those notes may come out uh, when we get to the final chug. Smells good. Definitely getting the maple syrup influence on this beer. It does smell like... Smells like pancakes with maple syrup covered all over them. Smells good. Uh, and I thought I'd read somewhere where they just put in their final batch of, of this in, into the bottles. And that'd be, be what I've got from Rico recently. So whether they're going to do it anymore or not, I don't know. Smells good. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. And he sent me this. Uh, before I get into it, let me read what he sent to me. 
2017 Founder CBS Canadian Breakfast Stout. You already reviewed this. I have. I didn't go back and look at what I gave it, but I probably was pretty impressed with it because you got to kiss somebody's ass around here to get one of these. Uh, brewed with coffees and imported chocolate and aging bourbon barrels and then aging maple syrup. This was last bottle distributed back in 2011. Vintage years on the left, 2017. Next to the UPC barcode purchase, and it was $24 is what he paid for this. And that's why I brought it out and reviewed it. This man paid $24 for this bottle of beer and he sent me. You think I should just drink it or put it in the, in the closet or pour it down the damn drain? It's not going to happen. Uh, I thought hard about this and I'm going, he spent almost $25 for this bottle. And he wants to see a review on it. And by golly, I'm going to give it. And by golly, if that chaps your ass, turn the damn video off. So, uh, he said his local beer store was limited to two bottles per person at the time. And that's been a while back, guys, so a couple of years ago. So let's see what this has to offer. I was very impressed with it. Let's see if I still am. Wow. That is absolutely delicious, guys. I mean, it's a crying shame what's going on with this brewery right now. Wow. That is absolutely outstanding, guys. The bourbon notes are not off the chain. They're there. I can taste them, but they're not off the chain. If you're looking for a monster of bourbon, bur bourbon beer, this is not it. This is a smooth, easy drinking, aspartive type of beer, dessert beer. And not something you want to chug or, or, or a good beer to share, which I'm going to do. I'm going to pour the other half a, a glass of this. Uh, and, and like I said, I am going to review the 2019 edition in the little 12 ounce bottle that he sent me too. So it's coming, guys. Uh, so uh, uh, when these beers are sent to me, I feel obligated, especially when they're this expensive and this hard to get your hands on them. Uh, but I, I would, I'm not going to purchase them anymore. I'm not going to support them because of what they've done. Uh, but I am going to review them if they're sent to me. Uh, but like I said earlier on one of the other reviews, don't send me any more session beers. Yeah, if you send me a 4% beer, I'm not going to review it. I don't buy those beers. I don't session beers anymore. Uh, I'm not going to review it. So... Uh, just remember, if you, if you want to send me a 4 point whatever percent beer, I'm not going to review it. not going to happen. And that may chop your ass too. And if it does, I'm so sorry. It is what it is. Since my heart attack, I'm only allowed a couple of beers a day. I don't buy session beers. I'm not going to review them anymore. So uh, don't send me any more less than 5% beers because you're not going to see them reviewed. I'll just give them to the other half and she'll drink them because I'm not going to. I hate to be that way, but I'm an old man. I'm almost 63 years old, had a heart attack, and I can, I can, I'm not going to do it, guys. I'm not going to waste the two or three beers I can have a day on something with that iced tea type of ABV. So, it is what it is, guys. So, eh, got all that off my chest. Anyway, this is a very tasty beer, guys. And this one is a 2017 that uh, was produced before all this shit hit the fan, like I said. So, uh... It is. If you're on one side of the fence, you might not want to see this review. Don't watch it. Turn it off. Move on. And if you do, I'm still going to buy it. Uh, they make great beer. Watch it and see what happens. Uh, we're going to do the final chunk. I'll be right back and we'll see what kind of grade I'm going to give this one. Alright guys, I'm back. I've been sitting up for a while. Very nice slicing on the glass. The other half loved it. I love it too. Uh, it is a shame what's going on with this brewery right now. They're not considered a craft beer brewery anymore since they sold out. Uh, but this is a 2017. This is before they did all of that and the lawsuit that's against them and all of that, guys. I mean, a lot of damn shit going on with this brewery. I will not be purchasing anything else from Founders. But if they are sent to me, I am going to review them just like I do the Bourbon County series from AB InBev. Uh... I don't think it's fair to me for somebody to spend their hard-earned money on it and send it to me, pay for the beer, pay for the shipping, for me not to review it, guys. Uh, but I am not going to purchase him myself. And this is a 
awesome freaking beer. It is a crying shame for what's going on there at the brewery right now. Uh, I didn't go back and look at any reviews that I did on this beer before. You had to really know somebody, name on a list, stand in line, kiss somebody's ass to get your hand on the CBS version of this beer from Founders uh, around here. That may not be the case in other parts of the country, especially closer to the brewery. Uh, and this is a big 22-ounce bomber, which I don't think they're doing anymore since the last one that Rico sent me a couple, a couple days ago uh, was a little 12-ounce bottle. So they, they have realized that they can charge the same amount for a 12-ounce as they can a 22-ounce, or pretty close to that, uh, and sell just as many of them. And, uh, and uh, and all that that's what the whole game is about guys uh, sell as much of the beer as you can and make as much money as you can that's the whole idea in the beer business sell as much as you can for as much as you can and that's what they do and a lot of breweries have figured that out not just founders, but a lot of other breweries that used to package stuff in 750, 22s, and now down to 12s. Uh, it is what it is. If they realize they've got an exceptional beer, well-made beer, and they have a cult following, and people will stand in line to get their hands on it, they do what they got to do. And I understand that, uh, but uh, it is what it is in the beer business, and I've been in it long enough to know that. And, uh, I understand that. So, uh, this is the CBS Canadian Breakfast Stout from Founders Brewing. This is this 2017 edition before they got into all this turmoil that they're going through. Uh, very tasty beer. Super tasty beer, guys, in my opinion. Very well made beer. An awesome beer. The bourbon notes are not off the chain. The coffee notes are not off the chain. But everything is well balanced. So you get a little bit of everything. You get a little bit of bourbon, the notes of the bourbon, and you get a little bit of the coffee. You get a little bit of the bittersweet chocolate, and uh, you get a little bit of everything. It's a nice, balanced beer. A little bit of everything. Nothing is off the chain. Nothing is standing out more than everything. It's a very well-made beer. So uh, the bourbon notes are not going to be off-putting. Uh, a lot of the bourbon beers are off the chain. Uh, I mean, super bourbon notes alcohol burn and all that stuff. This one is not. Uh, a very well-rounded beer. So if you're looking for something that has bourbon notes off the chain, super bourbon, bourbon notes, not it. If you're looking for something that has big coffee notes off the chain, coffee, not it. But if you're looking for something that's, you get a little bit of this, you get a little bit of that, you get a little bit of the other, very nice. Final check. Super well-rounded beer, and for the alcohol percent being 11.7%, it is fairly well hidden, a well-made beer. Guys, it, I'm not going to take anything. I'm going to be as I'm being as honest as I can be. This is a very tasty beer. It is a crying shame. That's what's going on with Founders now, with them selling out and lawsuit. Sad. It saddens my heart. The, this is going on. This is not considered a craft beer brewery anymore. Wow. Delicious beer, guys. I'm not going to pull anything away from the beer. This is the 2017 before all this shit hit the fan. This is a tin beer. This is absolutely a tin beer. And as much as I hate to, to give it that, it is what it is. Everything is there that you want to taste, and this style of beer from what they have produced here with the maple syrup and the bourbon and the coffee notes and, and everything else that goes along with the beer. Very nicely done. Uh, yeah, like I said earlier, I have a 2019 that Rico just sent me a couple of days ago. I am going to review that uh, because he sent it to me. He spent his hard-earned money on it, and I am going to review it. So, if if what's going on at Founders Chapter Ass, don't watch. 
Just move on. Just move on because I am going to review it. I'm not going to buy anything from them anymore. But I am going to review the beer that uh, that are sent to me, just like I do the Bourbon County series uh, from Goose Island. Uh, it is what it is. This is a 10 beer, guys. This is absolutely a 10 beer. I, I'm not going to take it out of the way because of what's going on with them now. But it is awesome. If you have one of these beers, you have a very outstanding world-class beer in your possession. Uh, I don't know what the 2019 is going to bring. Uh, we're going to view that pretty quick here within the next week. And uh, we're going to see what that brings. And see if it's just as tasty as what I have here on the 2017 edition. But this is a 10 beer. No doubt. I cannot take that away from them. So, over to uh, Beer Advocate, which they have it listed as 11.3%, not 11. 7% 7 7 like this one is, because uh, they comp them all together, they have 100. They have world class. And it is, guys. It is absolutely that. I'm not going to take that away. I'm, I'm as honest as I can be. It is a very tasty beer. Over to Untapped, they have it at 4.53. That's not the best numbers from them that I've seen, but pretty damn close. Uh, that would definitely be in their upper A category, if not A+. Plus. And I'm giving it to A+. Plus. It's got the ABV on it. It's got the vintage on it. Well done. Absolutely well done. It make, It's very saddening to my heart what's going on with it. What has gone on with this brewery. But I understand what that is. I mean, the guys that started this brewery, two of them, are in their 50s. Uh, and they've been in the beer business for quite a while. And somebody come to them with a big wad of cash saying we're going to do this and you know they're looking at their retirement their families and taking care of themselves and I understand why breweries do this I do but I also understand that we're craft beer drinkers and home brewers and when they do that that puts them out of the craft beer market they're not considered craft beer breweries any longer when they sell out. When somebody buys more than 25% of the brewery. Uh, so it is what it is. That's, that's the real world. That's the life we live in. The world we live in. It is what it is. And I don't fault the guys that owned craft beer breweries for doing that. Uh, it increases the distribution a lot of times and gives them more capital to get their beers out in the bigger markets. And I, I understand that part of it too, but you got to realize people like me want to support the independent craft beer brewers. And when they do that, they get out of that category. Uh, they're not considered craft beer brewers brewers any longer and these people here at Founders are not either. Uh, they're not considered craft beer brewers anymore. So Founders is not a craft beer anymore guys. Uh, they've sold out. So but anyway, it is a tasty beer. If you have a twenty seventeen edition in your in your closet or uh cellaring fridge or whatever, uh still very tasty. We'll see what the twenty nineteen uh, that Rico has sent me the other day Bring some table and sip it still just as tasty as this. Uh, but I won't be buying any more Founders beers, but I will review them if they are sent to me because I feel obligated, guys. These guys buy their beer buy the beers and they send them to me. So they're they're spending their money on buying it and they're spending their money on sending it to me. Shipping is not cheap on beers. So I am still gonna review them, but I'm not gonna purchase them myself. So with that being said, if that chaps your ass, I'm so sorry. It is what it is. Uh, 4.53 from Untapped, and like I said, uh, that's definitely into their A to A plus category. Uh, it is an, a well-made beer. The 2017 is awesome, guys. It is very, very tasty. And you know, hopefully you have one in your cellar that, that you can drink. And if you've had it recently, let me know what you think. Until we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge.